Good morning, and welcome to the Piscataway Township Civil Rights Advisory Commission's annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. An opportunity to salute the life and legacy of extraordinary man who against all odds still fought for equality for all. On behalf of our mayor, Brian C. Waller, and chairman, Reverend Dr. Kenneth L. Saunders, we invite your attention for the next 58 minutes to song, dance, spoken word, and messages from some of the most talented, creative, motivating individuals on the planet. And it is my pleasure, Piscataway Councilwoman Michelle Lombardi, to walk you through this amazing program. Let us begin the day with a rendition of Lift Every Voice and Sing by Aviance, following with prayer by Reverend Linwood Rouse, pastor of Macedonia Free Will Baptist Church located here in Piscataway. Scripture readings by Reverend Drs. Eric and Myra Billups, pastors of North Stelton AME Church, also located here in Piscataway. With every voice and sing till earth in heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let us Give an honor, the honor to God, uh, our Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, and to our mayor, officials, and pastors, and ministers, to our preacher for today, and to everyone that here uh, for this great service uh, and great breakfast of Martin Luther King Jr. commemoration this morning. Uh, at this time, I've been asked to pray, and I'm asking everyone if they'll pray along with me. Let's pray. Most holy and all wise and gracious Lord, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Your majesty, glory, and presence is seen, felt, and experienced by thy grace that is given every morning. Oh, blessed Heavenly Father, we come before you today, thanking you for all that you have done for us this past year. We want, you to, th we want to thank you for you have kept us, watched over us, in this pandemic that we yet stand here in this new year. We're looking forward not only, oh Lord, uh, that you will carry us through this year, for we don't know what uh, this year has in store for us, but we're asking in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that uh, you would keep us in your hands. For you know our lying down, you know our rising up, Lord, our going out and our coming in. Continue to watch over us and keep us. We pray in 2021, Lord, that you would help us uh, not to take uh, your goodness for granted, but to seek you and your will. To be holy as thou art holy, to love you with all our all and our hearts, minds, and soul, and our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, we come at this time praying as well for our nation is in need of your blessing like never before. We pray that you bless, lead, and guide 
the new leadership here and everywhere in America and bless this service today. Bless the preacher to bring forth a powerful message of hope, assurance, and your will. And those that have come today to be a part of this year's Martin Luther King Jr. commemorative breakfast of 2021. Finally, Lord, we know if it had not been for you on our side, struggles, sufferings, and the sacrifices in our lives, we would not have made it through the year. Yet, by thy grace, by thy mercy, through it all we yet stand. So bless us, Lord. Help us, keep us, and preserve us in, thy, in the mighty name of thy blessed Son, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Happy New Year. Praise the Lord. Today's scripture will be found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. Again, the word of God, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Help me welcome Mike Westbrooks, a former Piscataway resident who now resides in Georgia. Mike will be playing a musical rendition of I Rise by Yolanda Adams. We have with us this morning a very talented young lady, Dale Genesis Harris. She is a theater major at Montclair University. Dale will be doing an original piece in spoken word, The Power Invested in Me. Here's Dale. The Power Invested in Me. Something about us is amazing. The love, the rhythm, the rap, the hip hop, R&B, the flow within us, the African drum beat in our feet. The flow within us is special. But you should fear me. I have a power that when the sun hits me, my skin bleeds gold. The willpower of our culture is beginning to suffocate the breath that built this land. Burn the voices that sing, let freedom ring. Burn them until freedom looks like me. We will no longer stand in the fields like a scarecrow on death row. No, we're not held captive on a plantation, but my brothers and sisters should not feel that when in the streets they have to submit to a certain formation and fear of going to the store, being your final destination. Oh, I can't take it, I can't take it. My heart is aching, it's breaking for the tongues that cry, save me. Their actions are scripted by Satan. My parents may not have always had it, but my sister and I never came home without food on a shelf, 
always shining hungry. It's when you're younger, that's when you learn to eat. It's the world that showed me grind. Never want to fall behind. Rise above all like Mayans. Rhythm like Angelo. Passion for my culture like Meek Millie for Philly. Oh, this pity that is spoken unto us by society. Everything in this world becomes a question when you're classified as a minority. There's passion in the city, pride in the hood. I will teach my children to shout. I'm black and I'm proud as we should. Shouting and stomping like the preacher providing me wisdom, guidance to shut out my demons. Shouting and stomping like the church ladies when the spirit of Jesus enters them. Stomping my feet to when they cut the music and rock with the beat. Voices of angels singing God's message unto me. The prayers that come along when you pray together at an AME. Prayers go up for this country. Please, O oh Lord, bring down a blessing. You won't put our history in books, so we plastered across social media. Now the nation is shook. Took citizens to cry broke for the world to be woke. I remember my first encounter of racism. Second grade, private school, supposed to be Christian. But only three others that looked like me, but we all felt and dealt with the discrimination. But oh, my ancestors, oh, how they speak to me, mailed their prayers to me before I could be, hoping that someday we could meet properly. But they told me, unfortunately, it will be hard, you see. This world has a problem of letting us be. So use the shades of our culture to paint the minds of this earth greater than they will ever see. And today my tongue will paint yours until you truly see what it's like to be black in America. Our culture will always be powerful. Rich and thick, our souls sweet like yams. Our skin crisp and golden like our fried chicken or dark and sweet like berries and treats. We're creative, always have been. May not always get recognized for it, but our culture always lets us know we still win. Golden is my nickname because I always wanted to do right. A first generation proving herself to the ignoramus of this nation. We're angry. We're tired of this hatred. I'm only 20, fearing for the next generation. I don't want to teach my children fear for just being black and a nation. The pain of being black runs so deep, deeper than the slave tunnels below our feet. I'm praying for God and I ask him to keep our minds sane. I'm following this yellow brick road until it turns gold. Jesus is alive, I don't have to be told. Nobody should have to watch their back in fear. Move out of our way, black lives finna steer the boat like a champ taking henny shots poured down their throats. So far we've looked racism, pain, fear. Hope, death, and faith in the eye. But try to kill me if you want. I ain't afraid to die. But you fear my people, not because we are of color, but because, like Maya said, we still gon' rise. At this time, I'll bring up our mayor, Brian Waller. I want to thank you for tuning into this program today in honor of Dr. King. It is very timely that we remember his dream. After all, our country just experienced a nightmare. The Capitol was stormed and it was defiled. It was the violent culmination of a months long effort to discard the presidential votes of African Americans. A mob of white suprem supremacists tried to murder lawmakers and trample the Constitution. They were directed by a despicable and immoral bigot a lame duck president who never loved America. Dr. King once said, the limitation of riots, moral questions aside, is that they cannot win, and our participants know it. Hence, rioting is not revolutionary, but reactionary, because it invites defeat. It involves an emotional catharsis, but it must be followed by a sense of futility. We all know that disenfranchising African Americans from the polls is nothing new. What is new are the images shown on our televisions. Many Americans were shocked to see a Confederate flag inside the Capitol. Was it really shocking though? Statues of Jefferson Davis and other Confederate figures still stand inside the Capitol. 
the most prominent Senate office building and still named after an avowed segregationist. The Senate, led by Mitch McConnell, continued to block measures for Voting Rights Act. Let us use Martha Luther King Jr. Day and in the inauguration of a new president to renew our commitment to the real democracy and true equality. Let us clean the capital of the Confederate symbols and neo-Confederate lawmakers. Let us continue building Piscataway as a wonderful, diverse community. By doing so, we help build our country. Dr. King also said we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. We won't lose hope, we will remember his dream, and we will build a better America. I'm very happy to be participating in our annual Martin Luther King breakfast, uh, even if it's remotely. But a good reason for it, of course, we all need to stay healthy. If we can get through the next four months, we can live another 20 or 40 years. Get your vaccination, keep your mask on, use your hand sanitizer, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, Middlesex County uh, has a very aggressive uh, vaccination program. You certainly want to take advantage of it. But a it, uh, little off topic. On the other hand, good health is always on topic. So please be careful out there. Uh, what I did want to say today was that um, I think 2021 is going to be a year of big change. And a lot of that change is going to be uh, the kind of change that uh, Dr. King would dramatically support. Um, in fact, I have a, 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 one of his famous quotes, which is, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And I'm sure everybody uh, attending the breakfast today is very familiar with it. And I'm sure you're very familiar with some of the really awful incidents of 2020. Uh, uh, the terrible uh, George Floyd case, uh, Breonna Taylor, the, and the list is horrible. It goes on forever. And... Um, New Jersey, I wanted to talk about New Jersey in that context. Um, we are trying very hard to not see that kind of uh, behavior in New Jersey. And uh, I'm very happy to report to you that our Attorney General, uh, and his name is Mr. Graber, um, is working very hard on it with the state legislature but I have to give um, the credit to the Attorney General. And what, what he's done is to, and he's the top law enforcement official of New Jersey, he has adopted new policies for every police department, sheriff's officers, local police department, state police. And let me tell you what some of the, po the policies that have been adopted and we're going to see, uh, I hope, in 2021. So among the new policies are prohibition against any use of physical force against a civilian except as a last resort and only after attempts at de-escalation. Uh, a bar on deadly force against civilians including chokeholds, strikes to the head and neck except again as an absolutely last resort and a halt on firing at moving vehicles during high-speed chases, except in narrow instances. These guidelines uh, require New Jersey's 38,000 officers to undergo a two-day training on de-escalation and other tactics aimed at the uh, limiting of the use of force. Among the new items is a requirement that any use of physical force against a civilian be followed up within 24 hours with a report explaining what happened in a statewide use of force portal. And that's going to be available for public to review. So I think these are amazing uh, steps in the right direction. Uh, they have been endorsed by uh, Richard Smith, who is the uh, national head of the NAACP and they give me hope that 2021 in New Jersey is gonna be better than 2020 in the entire United States of America. 
So with that, I think a very positive thought. Let's uh, try our best to live in harmony with the goals of Dr. Martin Luther King, who is uh, a guide to all of our consciences and should be a guide to all of our conduct. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Hi, this is Congressman Frank Pallone. I, I want to thank the Piscataway Civil Rights Commission uh, for asking me to participate once again in your Martin Luther King uh, Jr. celebration uh, today. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do it in person. I always look forward to coming up to Piscataway at the Senior Center where you have the celebration uh, on an annual basis. But because of COVID uh, and the pandemic, we can't do it this year. Uh, but I think that the pandemic uh, and other things that have been happening, you know, most recently, unfortunately, this assault on the Capitol, uh, point out uh, why it is important uh, to continue to have a, a strong government that plays a role in addressing civil rights and the concerns uh, that uh, the average American have uh, that relate back to the need for equality and addressing uh, uh, you know, past uh, misgivings uh, in our country uh, with our history of slavery and inequality. And that's why it's important to constantly be out there uh, celebrating Dr. King uh, and his legacy. I want to thank uh, uh, Ken Saunders and Shirley Saunders uh, for putting this together every year. Uh, Ken, as you know, uh, has been out front on so many issues with regard to criminal justice reform and parole uh, reform, which is also part of what needs to be done at the federal level and at every level, uh, and has been highlighted in the last year or so with the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, movement uh, and the slaying of, uh, of uh, many, uh, many uh, uh, black individuals in, in circumstances that cry out uh, for police reform. Um, in addition, we have many of the first Piscataway uh, first, uh, uh, Sheriff Millie Scott, who is our first uh, African-American uh, woman sheriff in the state of New Jersey and does such an outstanding job. Um, we've had a tough year uh, when, it, when we talk about the plight of the average American. Uh, COVID is certainly an example. We have to make sure now I'm uh, playing, a, a, a really, really trying to make sure that uh, this vaccine distribution goes well and, and is done in an equitable fashion. Dr. King, as you know, addressed so many issues uh, that relate to civil rights, uh, the ability of African Americans to vote, uh, to have an equal education, uh, to have a good job and uh, economic opportunities, even foreign policy. Uh, he was a big advocate against the Vietnam War because of the injustice of the war. And many of those concerns continue to exist. And certainly when we talk about voting rights, this year we saw, or I should say last year as well as this year in Georgia, we saw a lot more people vote. The numbers that voted in the presidential elections, the people that came out and voted in the Georgia elections. Uh, and as a result, we're seeing major changes in Washington. I'm going to be going down uh, on, uh, on January 20th for the inauguration of Joe Biden. Uh, the Georgia races resulted not only in the, in the first uh, uh, Democratic uh, black senator from a, a, a southern state in a long time. I think you have to go back to, to the uh, uh, Civil War and the Reconstruction era after to see that. Uh, but now we saw it because people turned out in record numbers, particularly African-Americans. And so I think what you'll see with this new administration uh, and with a Democratic majority uh, in the Senate, as well as the House, that will see major expansion uh, of voting rights. And we'll see an effort to address police reform and, uh, and uh, address the concerns uh, in prisons, and also see a larger effort to crush the virus and to uh, provide um, a greater economic equality and, and educational, and eliminate educational disparities. But I want to say that we have to continue to be vigilant. Uh, when I saw what happened at the, on the assault on the Capitol a couple of weeks ago, uh, it made me, it reminded me of the continued need to be vigilant, to protect our democracy, to protect uh, voters' rights and the results of elections. Uh, that's a necessity. 
and Dr. King spoke about all of that. So thank you again for inviting me. Uh, have a wonderful celebration. But let's continue to be vigilant uh, about America, its values, uh, and equal opportunity. Thank you again. Hello, New Jersey. Governor Phil Murphy here. It is my honor to join with all of you in celebrating the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. This year, as we spend time giving back to our communities and reflecting on the message of Dr. King, the violence of the attack in our capital is still fresh in our minds. Contrast those images with the militant response we saw for Black Lives Matter protesters over the summer, and it is impossible not to see the difference. It has been more than five decades since we lost Dr. King, but in these dark times, his words still serve as our guide forward. Through our shock and revulsion, he reminds us, and I quote him, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Across every community, this year has been a difficult one. Tragedy has visited us in the form of illness, suffering, loss, and uncertainty. And while no community has been left untouched, this pandemic has revealed further what we have long known, that inequality and inequity rooted in structural racism persist and the effects on our black and brown communities are real and unmistakable. Our current national reckoning on policing and representation and justice is proof that while many are willing and ready to reconcile with the sins of our nation's past, some are not. But Dr. King also said, and I quote him again, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. The election of Reverend Raphael Warnock, the first black senator to represent the state of Georgia and pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, where Dr. King preached, that stands as irrefutable evidence that this nation is capable of change. But then 24 hours later, a mob driven by anger, racial grievance, and misinformation showed us just how far we still have to go. One of the most remarkable things about this year is that when so many things seem to stand still, the movements started by young people kept moving forward. Black Lives Matter, Me Too, the fight against climate change. And we are achieving results. I am incredibly proud that in the last year, my administration put in place one of our country's strongest environmental justice laws. We also delivered a first of its kind of use of force policy to ensure law enforcement is held to the highest professional standards, reaffirming New Jersey's position at the forefront of the national movement for justice. And we continue down a path of real and lasting criminal justice reform to create a fairer future and ensure that our state lives the values of those words, Black Lives Matter. Those achievements were driven in large part by your involvement. Let me be clear, your lived experience, your values, and your participation in democracy help shape the direction of our state. And that is the legacy of Dr. King. So although this year does not look how you imagined it might, or I, although we are still grappling with our demons, although we are still fighting our way through, do not be discouraged. Keep pushing forward, and together we will build a stronger and fairer New Jersey for everyone. Thank you all, and God bless you all. Thank you, Mayor and special guest. Now we will be blessed with a soloist, Tawanda Muslim, and the amazing liturgical dance team. I And nobody 
Saunders Jr. will now present our keynote speaker. First, let me acknowledge our great governor, Phil Murphy of the state of New Jersey, to our mayor, the one and only Brian C. Waller of the township of Piscataway, to the chair of the Civil Rights Commission, my father, the Reverend Dr. Kenneth L. Saunders Sr., to all other elected officials, to all family and friends. It is with a great deal of pleasure that I have the opportunity to present our Lieutenant Governor of the great state of New Jersey, Sheila Oliver, who through remarkable perseverance navigated uncharted territory to become the state of New Jersey's first African-American woman, Lieutenant Governor, who now serves with dignity and fortitude besides our great governor, Phil Murphy. I have admired our Lieutenant Governor for some time now, since I have served as a staffer in Trenton in the State House, where at that time she served her constituents as an assembly woman. On many occasions, I have witnessed her determination to pass bills for the betterment of the state of New Jersey, as well as her constituents. Her commitment to serve has always been inspiring to me, and I will always appreciate the impact that she has on my life. Now, without further ado, it is my sincere pleasure to introduce our Lieutenant Governor, Sheila Oliver. Hi, everyone. Happy Martin Luther King Day. I'm Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver. I'm so excited to join you and the Piscataway Civil Rights Advisory Commission for this powerful Martin Luther King Day celebration. I want to first thank the Reverend Kenneth and Mrs. Shirley Saunders, longtime civil rights champions in the Piscataway community, without whom this presentation would not be possible. I want to thank them and the commission for honoring me with one of this year's Trailblazer Awards. I am truly honored to accept this recognition and thank you from the bottom of my heart. I also want to thank Mayor Brian Waller and the town of Piscataway for always keeping the memory of Dr. King alive in the hearts and minds of your citizens. Today is a day of celebration amidst much chaos and strife. But the idea that one perseveres through adversity is not new. And the theme of this program today, through it all, yet we stand, is so very fitting for the tumultuous times that we are facing. What we witnessed unfold in Washington last week as an insurgency at the behest of a sitting president attacking our United States Capitol and members of Congress was shocking. My heart was so overcome to see that armed intruders broke glass, vandalized, ripped artwork, historic, historic artifacts from the walls. Who would ever have thought we would experience that during our lifetime? But Dr. King perse persevered in a time of civil unrest. And when he delivered his I Have a Dream speech to our nation, he spoke of his dream of equality. Today, he would be proud to know that the work that he and others did laid the foundation for the first African and South Asian American woman to be elected to the office of Vice President of the United States. And he would be proud to know that those efforts have also led to an inspiring African American pastor from the state of Georgia who stands at the same pulpit, at the same church that Dr. King had stood decades ago, being elected to represent Georgia in the United States Senate. But this progress for our country was only made possible by the hard fought work of civil rights legends like Dr. King, Fannie Lou Hamer, Rosa Parks, Shirley Chisholm, Thurgood Marshall, Bayard Rustin, and the late John Lewis. You know, 
I think that the passing of Congressman John Lewis touched every heart from one end of this country to the other. John Lewis is irreplaceable. The tenacity and commitment that he shown to make sure that this country was a country of freedom and opportunity and a welcoming environment for all. I'm so glad that with all of the tributes that were uh, paid to him that many of the younger people in our country were able for the first time to learn of, Do of uh, Congressman Lewis's history and the sacrifices that he made. We will always remember the Edmund Pettus Bridge and many of us look forward to the renaming as, of that bridge. As we continue our fight for justice and equality, through it all, Governor Murphy and our healthcare professionals are also working very hard to overcome a global pandemic. Broad vaccination efforts are underway in New Jersey to help protect citizens from this virus. I want to take a moment to remind everyone that this pandemic is not over. We must continue to take it very seriously in order to save lives. Governor Murphy and I continue to urge people to wear a mask, social distance, and avoid gatherings when possible. Again, I would like to thank the Piscataway Civil Rights Advisory Committee for hosting this outstanding program and wish you all a very happy Martin Luther King Day. Please stay safe and let us continue to take care of each other. Music Selection, Dreamer by Aviance.
Rest in peace, King. I would now like to introduce Brenda Smith to introduce our Trailblazer Award recipients. Brenda serves as the chairwoman of the Piscataway Civil Rights Commission and an active member of the North Delton AME Church. Welcome, Brenda. It is my pleasure to introduce the recipients of the Piscataway Civil Rights Commission Martin Luther King Jr. Perseverance Award to individuals whose career reflects dedication and service to their communities as they succeeded in accomplishing their goals which exemplified our theme, Through It All, Yet We Stand. New Jersey State Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver is a recipient of our award. This New Jersey native was born and raised in diverse Newark neighborhoods. She now resides in East Orange, New Jersey. Lieutenant Governor Oliver attended Newark Public Schools and received degrees from Lincoln University and Columbia University. As a trailblazer, she was elected to the New Jersey Assembly in 2003, was the first African-American woman to serve as the Assembly Speaker in 2010, serves as Commissioner of the Department of Community Affairs, and was elected Lieutenant Governor in 2017 with Governor Phil Murphy. In addition to her accomplishments in the public sector, where she established a caregiver task force, established financial literacy programs for middle schoolers, and strengthened equal pay for equal work initiatives, Ms. Oliver also has worked in the private sector where she taught college courses. I am happy to introduce to you our Lieutenant Governor, Sheila Oliver. Somerset County Commission Director Chanel Robinson was elected as the commissioner in 2019. This Somerset County resident is a veteran of the United States Air Force Reserves, a Rutgers New Brunswick graduate, and she works in St. Peter's healthcare system as a tech manager. She is the mother of three and grandmother of three. Her public service activities include Somerset County Board of County Commissioners as a member, Franklin Township Council Member, and Deputy Mayor of Somerset, and a variety other, of other municipal committees. Commissioner Chant Chanel Robinson served on a wide variety of community organizations and committees, including the JFK Democratic Club and Franklin Township Crisis Response Team. She has received numerous awards for her local leadership and is a member of Mount Zion AME Church, the Missionary Dance and Ministry Director, and the North Stelton AME Church Children's Choir Director. On behalf of the Piscataway Civil Rights Commission, I introduce to you Somerset County Commissioner Director Chanel Robinson. Julia Amica Porterfield successful black businesswoman entrepreneur. Julia Amaker is the majority owner and driving force, or at least one of few, female and black owned transportation companies in America. With her husband, she began transporting students to private schools in 1980. The business has prospered over 30 years with a fleet of school buses, medical access vehicles, cars and vans providing reliable and safe shuttle service to thousands of students, handicapped and elderly. She manages a staff of over 40 administrative personnel, dispatchers, drivers, and other individuals. Her community involvement has resulted in the, re the receiving of awards and accolades from civic public and religious organizations too numerous to mention, but that span her whole 40 years. To this Plainfield resident and mother of two, grandparent of eight, family has always been and remains the cornerstone of her life. Tenacity, fairness, perseverance, determination, and hard work are the key ingredients to her success. Her goals for the future include expanding prospects to provide and improve 
transportation opportunities wherever and whenever transportation is needed. Surely her life is an example of through it all, yet we stand. Middlesex County Sheriff Mildred Scott was elected in 2010. Sheriff Scott is in her third term as Sheriff of Middlesex County. She's the first female sheriff in Middlesex County and the first African-American sheriff in the state of New Jersey. Her career began in 1968 as one of the first females to graduate from the police academy to then be sworn in as a sheriff's officer. She worked her way up through the ranks of sergeant, lieutenant, chief warrant officer, and ultimately made chief sheriff officer in 1991. She's the first female to serve as the highest law enforcement officer in Middlesex County. Sheriff Scott has made substantial changes to the personnel, st personnel structure of the office, implementing major improvements in technology, including making major advances in the security to the courthouse and their satellite offices. She has established the Joint Fugitive Task Force in partnership with the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office. Sheriff Scott has been recognized nationally by many law enforcement organizations because of her groundbreaking achievements and has received recognition and awards from civic and community organizations nationwide. Sheriff Scott is a lifelong resident of Middlesex County, having attended public schools in the county. In addition to her duties as our sheriff, she cherishes the time she spends with her husband, children, and grandchildren. She is a true reflection of our theme, through it all, yet we stand. I want to now introduce the wonderful Mrs. Shirley Saunders. Good morning, and thank you so very much for sharing with us this morning in our Dr. Martin Luther King celebration. Every year for over 40 years, the Piscataway Township has recognized the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. This year, we've done it a little differently, but nonetheless, just as effective. In fact, I think that this was a special, special presentation because we were able to include folks from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Aviance, that young group. We're gonna hear from them again, I'm sure and also our brother Mike Westbrooks, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Reverend Dr. Kenneth L. Saunders Sr., our chairperson, of course, our fantastic mayor, Brian Waller and his staff, and let's not leave out Gene Wilkes and George Fairfield for their incredible leadership during this entire process. I thank my committee, Brenda Smith, Connie Stone, Sherry, Sherry Alexander for helping us to put all of this together. Thanks so very much to our honorees for allowing us to share their experiences to boost someone else to a higher level. Our young people have been inspiring, our dancers, our singers. This in itself has been a magnificent program. Thank you so very much for sharing. I hope that you'll watch us on our PCTC for the rest of January and February. Tell somebody else, let them be blessed. And then I present to you now, our pastor Kenneth L. Saunders Sr. for the closing. God bless and be encouraged. Thank you, Shirley Saunders, for an introduction that only a wife could do. To my friends, Governor Phil Murphy, the one and only Congressman Frank Pallone, my Senator, Bob Smith, the outstanding mayor, Brian Waller, elected officials, clergy, honorees, Millie Scott, Chanel Robinson, Julia Porterfield, all program participants, and the members of the Piscataway Township Civil Rights Advisory Commission. This morning, I greet you with the love of God and trust that each of you have and are experiencing good health as we come together to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Since we met on last year, 
we have faced a pandemic, economic collapse, civil unrest in our nation, fear, emotional, and social trauma. But because of the God of our fathers, we are still alive, and we can bear witness to the reality of this year's thing through it all and yet standing. Thank God for the great leadership we have in New Jersey, leadership that can look beyond the now and encourage us into a preferred future. Thank you, my special friend, the Honorable Sheila Oliver, for spending this time with us. We have shared this wonderful experience together, and now we must return to our normal schedule. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. To our Jewish friends, shalom. To our Muslim friends, assalam alaikum. And to our Christian friends, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you, now hence and forevermore. Amen. Please be mindful of the less fortunate. If you would like to donate, a list of charities can be found on our website.